Me, I go to America to change, by change my religion. Uh, I am not an immigration officer. And if you are talking about asking for asylum, well, cross the borders, go to Mexico and come before Joe Biden go. <laughs> you deserve it more. All right. <laughs> Dino Saudi and UA have professional ballot companies now like Europe. Ballot? What do you mean by ballot? I don't know what that word means. Sorry, my friend. B N A. What ballot company guys mean? Shall I search for it? Ballot company? What bad company mean? Dancing? You mean like ballet? Is it a ballet or ballet? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, you know, my friend, you are you are disconnected. Maybe the first people in the world who dance naked is in the Middle East. You never heard of belly dancing? You never saw it? You know, and the, the funny in this society, if a woman she get naked in the street, everybody get upset. But if she is a belly dancer, she's okay. Very awkward society, very awkward culture, you know. If a woman, she wear those clothes and she, you know, uh, do normal life, people will, will will eat her alive. But if she is doing bed dancing, she's okay. No shake, complain. Hamas, don't complain. <laughs> right? There is a, there's an actor, uh, his name is Adil Imam. Those who they are from Egypt, they knew what I'm talking about. So the judge, it's a comedy. You know, this guy, he make a comedy. He's a comedian. Uh, so the judge asked him, how come you know that there is a Billy Dancer, your neighbor, and you did not move from the building? So he said to him, well, if he's, he's speaking reality, if everyone will move from his apartment because he have a neighbor, she's a Billy Dancer, the whole country will move out. So, in one hand, you will see them, how much they are religious, women wearing hijab, uh, you know, and uh, like Mimi Hijab, his, even his last name is Hijab, imagine. In the same time, you look at their lifestyle, you will not believe it. And it's not, it's not even bay dancing, it's like sexual dancing. And it's usually disgusting. I mean, not all of it is, is is like women, even they look good. They bring you women, they they scare the hell of you. Maybe I can show you something here. But I will try to find something. Oof, 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 oof. What is that? Sidil <laughs> Aryan? <laughs> that's too bad okay I'm trying to find you something okay I don't know most of it is not it's not good even to be put in the screen but it is, I don't, I'm not going to play the video look at this they they make a stage in the street. This is not even usually is not even done like in the night club or no no. This is in the street, and then they bring women. They scare the hell of you, and they are almost wearing nothing, and that would make it more scary. And suppose and nobody complain. You see, those are religious Egyptian sheikhs. Not a single person open his mouth. Nobody complain. But if you take the Bible to preach the gospel in the street, they will eat you alive.
let us see if I can find you something we can put in the screen because most of it is really bad. Bad and dirty. Oh boy. Oop, 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 oop. Things is really getting weird. <laughs> I'm not going to show you anything if I'm seeing it right now. Oh boy, what I did type here. I can show you this. No, 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 no. Oh boy. <laughs> Guys, I can't show you, sorry. <laughs> I'm serious, I can't show you. Oh boy. I was searching for something. Maybe I can show you something, but none of this can be seen. Yeah, those. this is the land of haram and halal. You know, haram, haram. You know, yeah. Okay, maybe this one can be lawful like a little bit acceptable finally I found something I can look at this this is Egypt brother <laughs> yeah I, you know I mean if I flip up oh boy You know what? I feel like I am disconnected with the Middle East. I typed this. I did not type those words for a long time. And now I see crazy stuff. Things really messed up there. I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting something way less from what I'm seeing right now. Oh, man. I could not find one decent video to show you. When I say decent, I mean it's like you can put it on the screen. I know that most of you are like very young, 60, 70, 80. Forget. <clears throat> Yeah, but if you are a person who have a gospel, then they will make you shish kebab. Gaza is losing, so the end is near. What Gaza have to do with the end? I mean, is, is Gaza is the center of the world? If Gaza is losing, that is the end? Are you talking about the end of the time? Or you are talking about the end of the war well what I saw in the news okay as long as you mention this uh, <clears throat> this is from like uh, maybe six hours ago I saw or maybe more obviously the Israeli they are really doing uh, they are moving way faster than what I thought. Let, let me see if I can find you. If I can find you the, uh, the map. Hmm. All right, maybe this one here. All right. 
Uh, this one actually is not too much accurate. This is a Wall Street Journal journal map. I saw I saw the map from uh, Israeli uh, forces. More like way more details. Anyway, so the Israeli obviously right now they are controlling those areas, as you see in the screen. And like the area they are highlighting, like there is a totally red, as you see here. This is all. This is not really uh, now. Uh, already they have all this area totally under their control. This area here, let us use different color. The, the street which is in the beach area here is not under their control as a ground but it's under their control as a fire which means nobody can use it because they have their ships in the front this area is very busy area which means buildings are like just right away next to the beach uh, so this is why until now they did not enter this area in order to enter this area that's mean you have to take all Gaza right away and then they took all this area here and I believe now, I don't know for some reason here, this area, it's not totally under the control, this area here. I don't know why. Even in the map I saw, it shows the same. Uh, but this area here, let us use red. And all this area here, is under their control. And I'm not sure really why why here this uh, blue section, why did not take it? That doesn't make sense. Maybe I don't know. But it look weird. You know I'm not I'm not from that area so I have no idea how the the geography is in that area and what is the reason they let it I mean because all what they need to do is just take it I mean it's empty there's nothing there actually you know they should close it but they did not I don't know why so all this area is under their control and you can tell they are shrinking the distance this is the heart of Gaza actually which means now they are already in the heart of Gaza here is the heart of Gaza so already the Israeli army is in the heart of Gaza. Yesterday I made a video about they are they capture the uh, or like you know they surrender around the 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 top leader of Hamas. This is what uh, Sky News they said, but then there's nothing in the news about it. So maybe this guy, the journalist, who said that the news he get it wrong. Maybe they meant they are surrounding all the area and he is hiding there. They don't mean literally that they are like, you know, they got him. Maybe that's what he thought. And then here you have this street here, by the way. This street is totally under the control of the Israeli. You know, nobody can use it. So obviously Hamas, as they announced today, Hamas lost control of the west uh, of, uh, of, of Gaza. They have no control no more. And not to forget to mention that they have full control of the space, the sky. They have those drones. They are scanning every single street. So if you, if, if a member, he want to move from building to building, the drone will see it. And if they were able to do this in a very short period, I assume that things will collapse faster. Because remember, it doesn't matter really how much Hamas they prepare themselves. They are not getting a new supply for an emission, for weapon. This is war. You know, if you go uh, to shoot with your gun for 15 minutes, uh, you know, we will need a lot of bullets. But we are talking about now more than almost two weeks now of like... Uh, ground war 
So the more, the more, this is why now we heard in the news that Hamas is asking for three days ceasefire. In return, they will release 10 or 20 prisoners. So this is how much they are desperate to have ceasefire. And I think uh, they are asking for ceasefire. Maybe they are trying to dig a tunnel somewhere. You know, otherwise asking for those days does not make sense, except they are trying to buy time for something. You know, maybe there there's a tunnel uh, the Israeli they were able to destroy. Maybe they are working to fix it. Like let's say a tunnel uh, uh, maybe here in this area, let's say. And the Israeli they destroy it and they are trying to seek outside or to smuggle a weapon. Otherwise, it's exchanging uh, hostages for few days of ceasefire does not make any sense because what that will do? Why do they want to give hostages if you stop ceasefire just for a few days? You know what I mean? Mostly they are trying to buy time because they want to smuggle something. Maybe they want to get out. Maybe they want to smuggle weapon. Maybe. Otherwise, I don't find any reason for it. But the American Joe Biden is forcing it, claiming that they will release 20 hostages. 10 of them are American. If I am Netanyahu, I will refuse ceasefire. Doesn't matter what, if it's one day or not. Either if you uh, release all hostages or release none. I mean, isn't even the American ashamed to say release the American? Why the Israeli, they are not worth it? You want to just free your own citizen? So Israeli should not accept, actually. Either all our citizens go out, everybody is kidnapped, go home, or war will never stop. But obviously, uh, Hamas is collapsing. That's why they are offering voluntarily release of hostages. Because obviously, their, their situation is not good at all. And I think they are not really, uh, they never thought it's going to end this way. Any idea why the US launched launch airstrike on Iran? Linked weapon warehouse in Syria? This is not USA, this is the, the Israeli army. The Israeli army is the one. And you know, those attacks, they are useless. You know, the, the Israel, they don't want to attack Hezbollah in Lebanon, deep in Lebanon, because there's an agreement since 2006. So they don't want to be the one who break the agreement. So they beat Hezbollah in Syria because Syria is not part of the agreement. So they don't beat Hezbollah in Lebanon. They go after Hezbollah in Syria. But this is something they do always. I mean, this is nothing new. If you go right now and search how many strike Israel did to Syria or Hezbollah in Syria, you will find in the 365 days, maybe at least 200 strike. So this is long before Gaza war. All right. Always Israel attack Hezbollah in Syria. Always, nonstop. Almost every week for the last few years. Uh, so anyway, I, I believe Hamas is collapsing so fast and Qatar and Erdogan and all the scumbags in the world, they are trying to buy time for Hamas so they can either smuggle a weapon or get some help. There is something. Otherwise, there is no reason for, the, for them to beg for, you know, what three days will do. What exactly the accomplishment, what they will do. Why, why why, a terrorist organization, they will release hostages when this is the treasure they have? For three days, why? I think they are digging a tunnel somewhere, trying to do something. So the Israelis should not give them a break or time to rest or relax. Uh, 
And I hope uh, Netanyahu, he will not listen to Joe Biden. He should not. But you never know. I mean, this is uh, politics. You see, the Israeli army is very powerful. But a powerful army can lose war because of politicians. Politicians are dirty people. Very dirty. All what they care about is how to win the Kimi election. They don't care really for victory for their own country. Uh, they cannot regroup because you see what what uh, what the Israeli did. They cut they cut Gaza. Uh, like there is a cut even here. You see the map here is not really accurate. So Gaza already became three parts. So regroup what? I mean, they are just isolated. The only thing I can think of that they are trying to repair a tunnel destroyed by the Israeli army by the bombing. You know, maybe they have those big machines who can dig fast. You know, the one they use them for ground, you know, uh, under bridges or mountains. We don't know if they have uh, some high tech uh, machine, diamond machine, you know. There is a small size of them. So if they have that, they can dig again and they can reach somewhere else. But there is something behind this is three days ceasefire. They are begging for it. And the Israelis should be smarter and not to let it happen. It doesn't matter how much Joe Biden, the donkey, he asked for it. Same time, it's an insult for the Jews to let other citizenship be free before your citizen. That is a shame. So look what what what, the, what what Joe Biden is asking for. You attack, you sacrifice your soldiers. Already the Jews, the Israeli, they lost thirty four soldiers since the war started. You know the ground attack, and now the fruits is to give it to Biden. What about their own citizen? So it's very disgusting. You know, Americans are not, their life is not worthy more than the Israeli. Either you release everybody or nobody get out. If I am prime minister, I will not accept. In fact, I will say, my people before anyone else, take it or leave it. So what Joe Biden is doing, he is putting pressure on Israel. Do me a favor, the same as I did favor to you. Like, you know, I stood with you. I announced we are with Israel, blah, blah, blah. So do it for me. I want to, you know, I have election is coming. I want to look like a hero. So it depends how the Israeli government, they think about it. But for me, it sounds very fishy. And it's not the right thing to do. <clears throat> You know, Hamas, they release those uh, two women, if you remember before, because they are Russian. That's all. You know, they are Russian. You know, you know, when, when, the, when the whole world talk about discrimination, and the same countries who speak that they are against discrimination, they discriminate everything. Like now, there's, I think, about 25 uh, employees from Thailand being kidnapped. Anyone heard about them? Did you hear anybody speak about them? Nobody. Why? Because they are poor Thai people, you know? People speak about the American, they speak about the British, they speak about the Scottish, they speak about the Australian, but nobody speak about the people from Thailand. Why? Because those are poor people from Thailand. So discrimination is in every step around you. Everything. Like if you are in Indonesia right now and you want to go somewhere, are they going to treat you the same way as somebody have American passport? No. 
most of countries will not even give you a visa. Me, myself, if I have a Middle Eastern passport, and I am the same person, and I have an American passport. By the way, I have only one passport, American passport. Do you think I can go to Europe with Middle Eastern passport? No. Do you think I can go to Australia that easy, go in the airport? No. Nobody will welcome you. So, you know, like they speak in the world today about equality and, you know, all of this is just garbage. In reality, in reality, they don't treat you equal to anyone. If you are coming from a poor African country, you are not welcome. If you are coming from a poor Asian country, you are not welcome. If you are coming from here or there, as long as your country is poor, you are not welcome. But if you are coming from Emirat or from Qatar, even if your country support terrorism and you have a bunch of millions of dollars in your pocket, you are more than welcome. That is reality. Fifty-four. Huh. So fifty-four. Uh, our here, our friend is correcting me. Fifty-four uh, Thai citizen. They are kidnapped. Nobody talking about them. Poor. We don't know if there is any Filipinos or Indonesian. We don't know because they count only the American. They count only the Australian, the Canadian. But who's going to count those poor people? Nobody. You know. Who's going to free them? Nobody. Those people will die and nobody will remember them. Yeah. And then you ask yourself, why in the world even they took those Thai people? Very evil. They will rape them, especially the women. I am very sure they are raping the women there. Even men, they will rape them. Four Filipinos, here we go. Yeah. Is the Philippine offering, is Thailand offering to send forces to free their citizen? No. You see, this is the other problem. Poor countries, government don't care for the citizen. If an American is kidnapped in the Philippines, the president will offer to send his air force to find them the kidnapped American. But their own citizen, they don't uh, care for them. They will take uh, care about them in TV, maybe. Right? Yeah. But this is what they say to you, that everybody is equal and, you know, United Nation and etc. And we believe in, you know, human rights and, you know, but reality, every country in the world discriminate. In fact, even Asian, they discriminate Asian. I remember once I wanted, I wanted to rent an apartment in the Philippines. The guy, he refused to rent the apartment to me because he thought I'm a Filipino. He thought I'm a Filipino. After he rejected my, you know, my request, he sent me an email back saying he accept. So I said, why you reject, you know, yesterday and now you are, what happened? He said, I thought you were a Filipino. Can you believe it? Filipino don't want to rent his apartment to a Filipino. So even Filipino discriminate Filipinos. So why the why why the rest will not discriminate? I mean, if you are a, if you are an Asian, discriminating Asian, you don't want you know they want a, they don't want an, a, a Filipino guy. Why I don't know why. You know. Yeah, they don't train Filipinos. There's many countries actually. They say to you like we don't train Korean, we don't train Filipino, and the one who own it is a Korean too. So. He's a Korean, he don't trend Korean. Filipino don't trend for a Filipino. Uh, a, a Thai, they don't trend Thai. I mean, so, like, you know, they they want to rent the Western people. They want to rent white people too. And they can even discriminate you if you are black. They don't trend black. I'm sure if he knew that I'm an Arab, he will sell his house. But he don't know that, you know.
Uh, <clears throat> no, the whole world is like this, isn't it? You know, uh, but people like in public, they say things and they do it the opposite. Like, you know, you see those Muslims, they speak about Islam, you know, you will not find one of them marrying a black woman. Go and go to London and find me which is Pakistani is marrying an African black woman. Never. All of them, they are desperate to find a white woman. And she have to be blonde. Do you remember the guy who is an ex-Muslim? I forget his name. They keep talking about his wife, the white woman. Uh, CP must be looking like a handsome Filipino. Yeah, you know, last time they asked me, where are you from? I said, from China. They were looking like, what? You know, you, China? So said, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Abdullah Samir, you are right, Abdullah Samir. You know, like, uh, uh, actually, I saw a comment in the previous video, people, they are guessing where a Christian prince is from. So the smart one of you is correcting them. No, no, one say he's from Egypt. The other one says, no, no, he's not from Egypt. The other one, he said from Syria. No, he's from Saudi Arabia. The other one says he's from Iraq. I know him. The other one, he said, no, he's from Lebanon. I mean, I'm, I'm dying laughing reading all those comments. <laughs> And then one of you, he said, well, Christian Prince always, he say where he's from. He always say I'm black, blonde, African-American from Japan. Yeah. True story. Yeah, I mean, to finish this, you know, always I say I'm black, blonde, African-American from Japan. What is missing? I mean, black, blonde, African-American from Japan. So I'm white black and asian okay it is anyone is missing and american indian american all right <clears throat> cp is an american now yeah yeah Definitely Lebanese like me. <laughs> what about maybe you are definitely like me, not me like you. <laughs> anyway. Actually, my, you know, my Arabic uh, accent uh, is, a, is a mix of accent because I speak all kind of accents. Uh, not only one or two. All right. Uh, but I find people are funny and sometimes dummy. You should focus on what is important and what we say is important, not something is silly. All right. Uh, I can hear a French accent from CP sometime. I speak French fluently. I can teach you French in two seconds. You know, before you say any word, just say Lu. You know, like... Uh, you go to a restaurant, you say, like, Le Garçon, yeah, he come to you, you know, and say to him, like, Le Falafel, Le, you know, Hamburger, uh, just add Le, and that's it. Trust me, it will work. Yeah, so I was able to speak uh, in a French in two seconds, very easy language.
CP is not Asian in the Middle East. He was oppressed for being Christian. Uh, in our reality, I never been oppressed, and nobody nobody dared to oppress me. Never in my life was oppressed by anybody. Ever. Who dare? I'm the last one anyone can oppress. When we speak about oppression in the Middle East, that is in general, but never happened to me, and nobody dared to do it. But not because they are friendly. Oppression happened to you when you allow oppression to happen to you. Are you Gazan? No, I'm not. <clears throat> All right. No, no, I, I never been oppressed by it. Actually, I was the. It was the opposite. You know, I was. You know, when I was uh, young, I was troublemaker. I. Uh, I don't want to talk about myself much, but I never been oppressed by anybody. No, it's, it's not about about you know Muslim. They uh, were. They cannot be unjust to me. Uh, they are unjust. But I believe strongly that always evil ones, they show their evil to you when you are weak. You see, if the Israeli, Israeli, if they are showing their strength, everybody will go down in his knee and respect the Israeli. They will not dare. The evil one will behave. So when you show weakness, the evil one will take a ride on you. When the Israeli they show weakness and they became so civil and they become so much politically correct and they become so much liberals and they become so much everything except being real, the evil took advantage of them and what happened a few weeks ago happened. That is the truth. Uh, <coughs> Have you ever had encounter with Jesus Christ? You mean what? Like, you know, uh, the Lord is speaking to me? I never heard, I never, you know, but sometimes I see dreams. And sometimes those dreams come to be true. Sometimes they scare me. You know, like uh, I found that what I saw is really happening. Um... Uh, but I never, no, I never spoke to the Lord or anything. But uh, sometimes I see dreams, and those dreams, it's hard for me to explain. And uh, sometimes I avoid seeing those dreams because they happen. You know, as an example, when I saw a, I saw a dream about uh, many things, like, uh, you know, the earthquake in Turkey. Uh, sometimes I see details in dreams and those dreams come very true. Like I can even see a dream of me talking to a person and then the exact sentence, I hear it from that person. So I don't know if this is like something, I don't know how to explain it. I have no idea. CP, are you ever going to get married? Uh, better fly, are you ever going to get divorced? What do you think about the Kurds? The Kurds? Yeah, there are people like everybody. And there is a big change in the Kurdish society. A lot of them, they are coming to Christ, which is very good. I mean, people, they, are, they ask really weird questions. Why do you want to know if I want to get married or not? If I want to get married, at first I have to find a woman to marry her. Like, well, you just, just get married? 
And women these days are scary. Long nails, long eyelashes. How you can even kiss her? I might go blind. You marry a woman these days. You go, okay, you, you, she is your wife now. You want to kiss her, right? Okay. Aren't you afraid of those eyelashes? Go right away straight in your eyes and make you blind? Just think about it. You know? What if she decide to play cat with you? With her nails, those long nails. Bye-bye. You know? What if she get... Let us say, okay, she like you very much and she put her nails in your neck. Fighting Hamas is easier. Why you want to do that yourself? Right? And then, you know, like you go to the bedroom, you take off your jacket, she take off her clothes, she take off her hair, the hair is fake, the lips is fake, the eyelashes is fake, the nails are fake, and then the breast is fake, and you know, Allah knows best what is fake, you know? Let us stop here. I'm just joking, okay? Don't take me seriously. Do you have a girlfriend? Well, I have four. I like to practice like, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, foursome. One only? What for? And what are you talking about? That boring. Four. We play cards. Hide and seek. You know, like one go under the sink, the other one hide in the in the closet, the other one under the bed. Like, do you see me? Especially if they are six years old, you know? A lot of fun. Uh, I think now you are standing at America now because he is being super silly if he put another flag than his own country with half Israel. Oh, that's deep. Yarmia, my friend, you must be working with the CIA. Yarmia is thinking about it. Mm, Christian Prince, he have American flag and Israeli flag. Mm. Yarmia, what do you think? Maybe I have one foot in America and one foot in Israel. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> what if Muhammad Hijab become a Christian one day? I hope that they will never come. We don't want trash. We want quality. Women is the scariest for you, women with high, long nails or high heels. Are you asking me how you like to die? By this or that? Or I don't know what your question is about. Women are scary anyway, you know, because first of all, uh, you know, men, they think totally different from women. So what women are thinking about, the man is thinking totally in the opposite direction, in a different galaxy. So the worry is not about the nails and about the high heels. The worry about where is the brain, you know? So if you are a person who is, your brain is functioning in a totally different direction, different speed, uh, you know, then that will be a big problem. Otherwise, the rest is easy. I mean, you can get rid of the nails in a very easy way. Just to change the shampoo, put acid. And, and the eyelashes, that is very easy too. You know, let your... Get the puppy. You know, those puppies, they chew anything. She sleep, he will chew her eye eyelashes. He will come lick her, lick her eyes, lick her face, and he will take... So, I mean, there's many ways to, to get rid of those things. Are you single? Yeah, I am.
Uh, anyway, I'm sure many of you are married and happy, and I wish you the best. Uh, I think today we have enough for today. The topic is out of, uh, I mean, look what we were and look where we are. I think I will delete this video. We were out, we, we spoke about everything except the topic. CP is savage. Mm, that's deep. The best feeling in the world when your baby call you daddy? Not if I am his dad. He will wish to go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh. are you familiar with Amr Abdul Aziz which one you are talking about the ruler or someone else there's millions they have the same name I'm trying my best to read the comments. How did the rabbi expose them? No, we exposing the rabbi did not. They are just playing his video. All right, all right, we will leave it for some time so you guys can watch it. But uh, because, you know, we spoke about many things, I wish we, you know, focus on the topic. But anyway, it's good. We spoke about many things people like, as long as it's helpful. The important is sharing and learning, and we learn from each other. All right. Uh, can we do a Christian call only? Yeah, we can do. Actually, if you mentioned that a while ago, we can take some calls, but maybe now it's late. What is Muhammad's prophecy? Muhammad, he have tons of prophecies. As an example, Muhammad, he prophesied that the son because this is something nobody knows at that time. And now, after 1400 years, scientists discovered it, that the sun set in a you know, bloody, muddy, boiling water. How he knew that? It's a prophecy. Uh, Muhammad, he prophesied that women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs, the top of their ribs, you know, the necklace location. Scientists never heard of this before. Muhammad, he prophesied that. So Muhammad have tons of prophecies. Muhammad, he prophesied that he is a prophet. How he knew that? That's not easy, you know. You know, once there's only one prophecy I made, it become true, which I don't know really how I was able to come with it. You know, I remember like once uh, I received like inspiration and uh, I told them that next month a lot of women they would have their period and man I mean I was getting email from everybody like wow you know a lot of women they got their period you know the guy he you know like my wife she got her period how you know you know I said because you're not sleeping with her hello I mean, if you are doing your job she would have a baby she would have a period you know like anyway so uh, you know profit being a prophet is a business and even these days, there's a lot of people claim to be a prophet just to fool the naive ones. You know, you claim to be a prophet, a bunch of fools will believe you. And they will start giving you money, and they will show you respect, and they offer you their women, and, you know, power, money, sex. What do you want more? Profit. You know, perfect. Yeah. Uh, what 
Would you actually debate and control debate? I have a video on my channel. I says I challenge them to debate me, and I'm, I'm I accept Zakarnak to be the moderator. The video is there. Correct, guys. I made a video, and I mentioned three or four names, and I said any one of them can be the moderator, and the rest they debate me. All in the are Muslims, Zakir Naik, I don't know the rest the name. Go watch it. Just to show you that they are afraid of me. Like when I called Mimi Hijab, how many times he hang up on me? I did not even ask him a question. The only question I said to him, how come you don't say inshallah? That's it. He asked me, you said that, hang up on him. You said that, hang up on him. <laughs> He was very much intimidated. He told him he's going to debate Christian Prince. How come he don't debate me the same he debate David Wood? He don't. I called him. Life on air. Cowards. He was trying to get get rid of you know the idea of the fear of debating me. So now he want to make the Muslim look. You you are finished, boy. Why? Uh, you said to the women, suckle me. The, your, your sister, she is a whore. She is the one who accused Jesus. He was doing things to his mom. And I was quoting your filthy prophet. He hung up on me. Did you say that to her? I was quoting your filthy prophet. He hung up on me. Bastard, you know. Bro. So he, he want to show that he's a man. But the fact he is terrified in his heart and his testicles. And look how many they were sitting waiting for me. Lili Dawa, Mimi Hijab, other three people, you know, camera, screen, computer control. Yeah, and then he denied that he knew me too. And not only that, look how evil they are. They put the, the computer, which my voice will come from far away from the microphone. So when I answer, people don't hear me. Nobody can hear me. If not, I'm going live and people from my broadcast can hear both of us. If you go to his recording, nobody can hear me. They, they do it in purpose. They put the speaker, which my voice will come from far away in the other side of the room. Should Jews dismantle Al-Aqsa or keep it? Well, you know, I cannot say what they should or should not, but if I am in charge, I will take it immediately. If I am in charge, I will take the temple of, you know, uh, uh, which belong to the Jews immediately. But there is no leadership to do so. You know, Israel, they have the power of massive army. And they are just, they don't, they don't know what to do. You know, they don't have a real leaders. But if I am in charge of Israel, I will take Gaza. I will take Jordan. I will take Sinai. I will take all the land which belong to Israel. I will not negotiate. Not even for a second. The more you give them land, the more you are being stupid and the more you are getting weak. You see now, if you look at this map here in front of us, Israel is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Very small. This is Israel. Look how small it is. So, and the more small land you have, the easiest for the enemy to smash you because you don't have a strategic distance like you know if you have a massive land let us say Hezbollah want to shoot at you a missile well if the borders is just you know 40 minutes from your capital you are doomed how you can stop the missile you have short very short period seconds but if your land you know, to the borders is 500 kilometers. You have good time to stop any attack. Attack by air, attack by land, all kind of attack. So the smaller it is, the easier to destroy the country. 
And because in Israel they don't have real leaders, they keep giving land, which is their land, you know, thinking that by doing that they will have peace, but they will not as they will never have peace. Like now, they will come in agreement with Gaza. Just wait. They will come with agreement, blah, 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 meeting, sub, you know, summit, etc. blah, 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 blah. And then, okay, Hamas is not there. We have a new group now. Few years after, not even two months after, just just count my words. You will see another attack happening and a stabbing and killing, and nothing will change. Stupidity is amazing. Nothing will change. They are just, you know, you have to get rid of them. People are hypocrite. People, they will say to you, it's not right. I mean, you cannot live together. It's obvious. Either you or them. You have to send them out. Take them to Egypt. Egypt as a country is a massive land. Send them to Arabia. I mean, Qatar, they, he loved them. All those Muslim countries around, they have massive land. Why nobody want to take them? Jordan is empty. Egypt is empty. Saudi Arabia is in the size of Europe. It's totally empty. You cannot live with them. And you will never have peace. And the Israelis right, are just wasting their time. And their leaders are being a bunch of idiots and stupid. This is how I see it. This is how I see it. And this is why, actually, the attack of, uh, of Hamas was very easy. I mean, because the country is so small, very small. And, you know, actually, they were lucky. The Israeli now, they were lucky that the attack was not done in the right way. Because if Hamas... Just to explain to you, if I am in charge of this terrorist organization, I will not go and attack the neighbors here. That's what they did. I will go here. I will go even farther. Tel Aviv. Imagine the impact will happen to the enemy if you go and you are in the capital trust me they can't go there because at that moment the whole country is asleep as you see it was so easy and the distance from here to here is very short it's not really a big deal nobody's watching same time Hamas when they attack obviously they did not organize their attack with Hezbollah. So imagine if Hezbollah start launching attack from the north. And then Hamas is launching attack from here. That will be a big disaster. The attack of Hezbollah will become very effective. Why? Because, as you know, the whole country is asleep, literally. The army is asleep. The intelligence is asleep. The prime minister is, is, is snoring. Surprise, my friend. It was the big point of this war. But what happened when the five hours pass and Hezbollah did not do any attack? Zero. That gave time to the Israeli to wake up, let us say, to, you know, like... A, do notice what's going on. Those five hours were, you know, very important. 
Otherwise, the number of casualties was going to be really, really way bigger. And the impact would be really horrible. And this is what happened when you give land. See, the Israeli, they went all the way. They took all the south of Lebanon before. And they gave it to them for free without peace agreement. This is how stupid the Israeli were. All this land was controlled by the Israeli. They would draw. And then Hezbollah get closer. And now they get more powerful because when they withdraw, Hezbollah claimed victory. They claimed that they are the one who kicked them out. When in fact it was just because of politics. Stupid politics, really no politician. So they withdraw. And then Hezbollah become in the border. And now they want to fix it. They have to go back and did and do what they did 20, 25 years ago. As simple as that. And I think this is the only solution. This is why I'm saying to you that Israelis, they should take more land, not give more land. Because the more land you give, the more you are risking your country. And you will never have peace. They hate you. They are just fooling themselves. I mean, think about it. Hamas... They don't even have an army. I mean, this is just, just a, you know, a terrorist organization, RBG. I mean, nothing. And they were able to do this. What if they have the, uh, the weapon of Iran? What they will do? Right? If they have just coordinate missiles, RBG, Katyosha, all kinds of, and those are not really, they cannot consider them these days as, uh, as something serious. And they were able to do this. What if they have the ability of a real army? What if they are airplanes? What if they have uh, uh, high-tech drones? What if they have, uh, you know, I mean, there is a crazy missiles these days. What, what will happen then? So I believe the Israeli are doing big mistake when they give lands by so-called peace agreement. All those peace agreement, they can be broken any second, any day. And they can take you in surprise too. You know, what is the guarantee that Egypt will not attack Israel tomorrow? If there's any guarantee? Do you understand what I'm saying? What is the guarantee? Peace agreement? Are you serious? You have a neighbor who they have a population of 100 million. What is your guarantee of security? A piece of paper you sign with them? The stupid Netanyahu, he was supporting the Islamic fighters in Syria. Why? Because they are fighting Hezbollah. Oh, okay, so the enemy of my enemy is my friends. Very stupid. If the Islamic fighters in Syria, they took over, what does that mean? Those are sponsored by Erdogan. So look what the donkey Netanyahu was trying to do. He will bring Erdogan to his borders, literally. Because you get rid of Iran or Hezbollah from Syria, you open the borders to Erdogan. And Erdogan will love it. Instead of Erdogan being here and the massive army of Turkey here, and they have no border with Israel, Erdogan will take over Syria. Trust me, because those are his puppies. And this is what he was actually, he wanted to do. He wanted to take over Syria. And that will make him really very powerful. You see, Syria, they have phosphate. And phosphate is very important to, to generate uranium. 
not only for fertilizer. And in the world of a new energy, today, they are trying to replace the, replace the, uh, uh, the oil fuel. This is what they want. They are second country in the world with phosphate. All this area here is a phosphate land. Massive. Not to mention the oil, which is controlled now by the Kurdish and the American for sure. So if Erdogan was able to go through, but Putin did not let him make it, he was going to be in the borders of Haifa. This is how stupid Netanyahu. He, he thought he thought he is going to, you know, by helping those terrorists in Syria, he will be able to, uh, you know, make Hezbollah collapse maybe. But it was a stupid plan because if Russia is involved, they will never lose. Because you have those terrorists, they have to beat Russia, and that is impossible. So very stupid plan. But anyway, the Israeli are lucky that the one is there now is Hezbollah, is not Turkey. There is a huge difference between fighting Turkey and fighting the silly Hezbollah. Even though they are very, uh, I mean, trained and they have a lot of weapon, but still we cannot compare between Turkey and Hezbollah. Netanyahu is, an, you know, for me, is the most stupid person ever became a prime minister in Israel. He's a curse. He's a curse for Israel. And the Israeli have, you know, they should never let him to, you know, to be a prime minister again. This guy is literally a big idiot. Yeah, he's lucky, actually. The Israeli are lucky. Because if the if the plan of Erdogan work, Israel is really in trouble. Because now imagine, if you are now at war, at war with the, with the Gaza, and Erdogan is your neighbor. I mean, he is making big noise, and he is way far. What he will do if he is next door? Because the plan was that if Syria become controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood. Erdogan and those puppy, the Syrian terrorist, they will do resign a union with Turkey. So Turkey and Syria will become one under the Muslim Brotherhood Caliphate, and Erdogan will be the ruler. He will be simply the first caliphate again. This is a dream. So then, instead of fighting Hezbollah, it will be fighting a country have a hundred million to population, massive in size, way more prepared for war, not for peace. This is how stupid Netanyahu is. He was bringing them to the borders. Leadership is not about winning a, a, a ball field, a battlefield now. It's about winning victory. And victory means the end of the war, not winning today. So the stupid Netanyahu, he was thinking about winning today against Hezbollah. But he was seeking a death sentence to Israel. Very stupid. He is short in vision, he cannot see farther than his finger. And this is what makes him very dangerous. What do you think about debate or conversation between Perez, Morgan, and Israeli President Isaac? Uh, I mean, the Israeli President, he don't even know how to talk. You know, I mean, and who, I mean, why even this guy he accept to be there? Yeah, and who is this guy, Morgan? This guy is inviting everybody. He just, you know, he's just, just a businessman doing show. And people, I mean, why even people watch it? I don't know. I find him silly. I find his program is silly. And I found that people, they are just uh, seeking entertainment. 
Did you learn anything from those interview he do? Yeah. People are dummies. You know, if you if you if you understand the human being uh, interest, you will find that those how, how those people they control your mind and they fool you, and because they have massive number of a view, you join the view not because it's important but because the number is big. The human being is stupid. His brain is so slow. If you go right now in the street and take with you five people and then make a circle in the middle of the road and look down at the ground, you will find people in the street, they come to join to see what are you looking at. Everybody want to put his head over your shoulder to see you are looking at what? Even if you are looking at shit. So those people who do those show, they understand how the crowd function. It's the goat crowd. The first goat walk, the rest of the goats walk behind the first goat. Why? Nobody knows. All what they know that there's many goats going in that direction. So we follow. This is what they call a trend. So follow the trend. Not what is smart, not what is right. So the guy, he have a massive view. We go, I mean, otherwise, why you have a massive view must be interesting. So the one who have one person listening to him, he must be stupid then. Yeah, this is what people think. But remember this guy himself, Morgan, one day nobody know him. He don't even have one person to listen to him. So he was a stupid then and now he's smart? No. But he understand how to play the game and how to play with the mind of those stupid people who they are desperate to join the trend. Uh, you know, if you if you look at those short videos, I wish that YouTube don't have those short videos. Keep suggesting for me the short videos. What is the most important short video, especially in your phone? A woman, she is doing a move, wearing a very short skirt. 28 million, 32 million, 60 million. And then you ask yourself, why people they click? It simply is the legs, is the ass, is the trend. Human being, even though we, you know, we, we claim that we are smart and we are, we are different, like we are not the same as goats and cows, and donkeys but um, there's not much different you know still the animal inside you work always the animal inside you will work Either you control the animal inside you, or the animal inside you will control you. So, which means at the end of the day, either you become an animal, or you're a human controlling your animal. But most the animal win. In the most of the cases. Like even when a human being he eats. Well, how 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 restaurant they make you go to their restaurants? Usually it's pictures, advertising. You know, but then you go to the restaurant, you try it, the food don't even taste good. But you go, because simply they were they were able to capture the animal inside you, your stomach. Your saliva is running. They would you know, a picture looked very delicious. You know the dog? Uh, the dog, when you when you show him food, even before he eats, his saliva is running. He did not eat yet. He, there's no food in his mouth. And a human being is not different too much. 
So they control your pocket, they control your spending, they control your vote, they control your dress, your clothing, your phone, simply by controlling the animal inside you. Like the animal inside you told you that you need to be better than the animal next to you. And the animal inside you told you that if you are a female animal, you need to dress better than the other female animals so you can get better attention, so you can look more pretty than the other animal. Because the male animal, he will like the one who is more pretty. So it's an animal animal competition. The, the brain is not functioning. So now the female, she try to get the attention of the male by physical attraction because he's an animal and she's an animal. The brain attraction is not there because there's no brain there, it's just animals. What do you think about Akora? I don't know. I never I don't know what this movie is about. Am I giving you a headache, guys? Shall I go? <laughs> I hope I'm not giving you a headache. You know, I'm, I, I hope I'm not making your life complicated. You know, I'm just, I know, I'm just trying to be simple with you. Uh, <clears throat> it is the opposite. I don't know what is opposite about it. You got your stalker arrested? I don't know who is the stalker. You know, it remind me of a joke. There's a girl, she came back home so late, and her mom, she asked her, Hey, why are you are so late? The school closed at, you know, like you left the school at one o'clock. The girl, she said, Mom, what I will do? If the guy who was stalking me was walking so slow behind me, so you arrested your stalker? How you notice that he is your stalker? You must be stalking him too. All right. Yeah, I mean, she have to walk slow because the guy walking behind her is so slow. He don't walk fast. So who is following who? I don't know. Does it matter if you are in the front and he's in the back or you are in the back and he's in the front? It doesn't matter. Sometime you might be following somebody, but in fact you are the one walking in the front and he is behind. It doesn't it doesn't have to be that you are behind and he's in the front. Right? Anyone have a headache from my conversation? You hate me, don't you? <laughs> uh, when you will be in TikTok, I open account in TikTok, they they, they they block me. I mean, you know, this talk talk is a scourish. Most of them they flag your video and write it, you know. <clears throat> Having a stalker is a scary. Yeah, well, I experience such people, you know. Uh, but I understand, you know. Uh, an average person should he should ask himself why he's being stalked by somebody. Mostly, he did something, you know. I mean, today, in, because of the internet, people post pictures, uh, you know, you have fans and etc. So if you don't want a stalker, then don't, don't do that. You know, stay away from such a thing. Keep yourself a private. Uh, keep your privacy and then nobody will kind of stalk you. A core a movie about Coptic Christian Egypt? Well, I don't know. 
and they were in an orchard. You love my intelligence. You know, the, the intelligence is a form of stupidity because you think that this is intelligence. Simply, let us say there's some kind of like, you know, some, something will tickle you, something like ticklish, uh, something will please you. So you think this is intelligence. But in reality, human being at the end of the day is very limited and he is very foolish extremely foolish uh, even when he you know like he is thinking supposedly uh, like uh, uh, you know let us say uh, serious but at the end of the day human being is very foolish and you will notice that by the decision you make and usually the one who think he is so smart is the one who make a big mistakes yeah because you trust yourself more you become more confident and you think, oh, I'm the, you know, I'm the one who's smart, and uh, yeah, uh, mistakes, no way, not me. And then you make a big mistake. The same as what happened to the Israeli right now. You know, they are, you know, very well armed, technology, weapon, very organized country, etc. So they are very smart, and because they are very smart, they made a big mistake. So a big mistake sometime can make you a very foolish person i mean being a, thinking you are smart the smart person is the one who agree that he is still foolish and he should be always be careful well feel free to copy my videos post it anywhere you want tiktok or anything else that's good All right. CP is a philosopher. This is not a philosophy. Philosophy is something totally different. Uh, you know, the Greek, when they used to practice their philosophy, they practice it for the joy of practicing, not for the sake of intelligence. It's like, you know, people play uh, a game and for the sake of the joy of the game. Otherwise, the game is a game. It's useless. It doesn't make any difference. And most of philosophy is the same. It's just a game of, you know, playing with the words uh, but there is there is something is way more better than philosophy is being real philosophy is not real philosophy have nothing to do with reality Douglas Maori, you guys are asking me names. I don't know really names. I don't. I don't. You know, if you will be. You will not believe it. You know, once my cousin, uh, she called me. She said, uh, "I'm drinking coffee with my friend. Come over. You know, I did not see you for a while, so I came there. She have her friend with her, and then suddenly my cousin she received a call from her mom. She have to go, but she will be back." Okay, so now I'm sitting in the coffee shop with her friend. She did not tell me that she actually have a friend there. And then, you know, uh, this girl, she is, you know, she asked me about artists, I don't know. Actor, I don't know. Songs, I don't know. So anyway, this girl, she, you know, she said, okay, I'm leaving. Thank you, nice meeting you. And she left. Two days after, my cousin, she told my cousin that I think your cousin, he hated me. She said, why? said, I asked him about the movie. He said, I don't know. Actor, he never heard of him. Singer, who is this? She told her, well, uh, oh, I, I forgot to tell you. My cousin, he know nothing about those things. Uh, you are asking the wrong questions. 
So like, as a, she thought like, you know, I'm like, I, I just don't want to get rid of her, you know, like I'm, you know, because I keep saying, I don't know, I, I never heard of him. Seriously, you don't know, you know, I said, no, I, I can't even repeat the names she mentioned to me, I don't know them. So what do you think about, uh, uh, who is, I don't know, really. So she asked me like a couple of questions about movies, about uh actors about etc what okay what the music you like i what i would say to her i don't know what music you, like. you know i don't know really i i, I don't even remember what, one one song so this girl she said man this guy he can he don't want to talk to me you know and she took her purse and she left i don't know what i did nothing you know i just i wasn't rude but in her mind that this guy keeps saying i don't know which is impossible for someone to not know this actor you know so you keep asking me, did you see this guy? Did you alter this guy? I don't know them. I, I don't care for those things. Those are the last thing I care for. So you're asking me wrong questions. <coughs> I remember only like a few names. I, I know them since I was a teenage, like Sylvester Stallone, you know. Uh, well, what is the other one? I I know it's funny, right? I mean, I don't I don't because I don't care for names. Uh, I don't remember the rest. That's it. <clears throat> Everyone, he have his own interest. So there are some people, they are obsessed with songs and actors and etc. For me, I don't care for them. I, why I want to even care for them? I might like a movie, but I don't care for the actor. Because the same actor can be bad in different movie. All right? And uh, mostly, I mean, the, you are watching a movie to entertain yourself not to be attached you see you talk about stalkers right we talk about a few minutes ago about stalker so simply an actor when you keep when you attach yourself to an actor you like an actor you are a stalker you're stuck that's it so any movie will have this actor it doesn't matter how silly it is that's it you like the actor so you convince yourself that this is a good actor but in reality, you should focus on the story, not on the actor himself. If the story is good, if the topic is good, if the way it's played is good, then it's good to watch. Otherwise, who cares for the actor? He's a person doing a job, you know, getting a lot of money, getting rich. You know, this is why you see some people when you go to their rooms, they have pictures of artists and singers and etc. Or an actor, he died, people, they cry, they wear black clothing, I mean, madness, you know, stalkers. Yeah. Can you speak as a Karnak? He's not here now. <laughs> Quit the Prince. First of all, I'm watching you from the beginning. And secondly, I can hear you. <laughs> oh boy. Have you had any Skype calls today? I did not open my Skype. I don't know if some people, you know, call me or not. Do you have a favorite saint? I don't know how you can have a favorite saint. What does that mean? Favorite saint? Even that you need a favorite? I find this question is really not... I don't know what to say. Favorite saint? Okay. If we say somebody is saint, that means he is already special. So you are saying to me, do you have a favorite special when all of them they are special? Otherwise, why are you giving them a name as saint? You know, I mean, 
if they, either all of them they are special and they are saint which means they are same equal or they are not so how you can favor a saint over other saint so there is saint more saint than the other saint What is your favorite book in the Bible? I prefer to say a favorite verses. A favorite verse in the Bible is not a verse by words, is a verse present my life today. So when you read the Bible, there is always something will be connected to your life today. That is the favorite verse. If you did not feel the connection with your day, with your daily issues, with the verse you are reading, that means you are not connected with the whole Bible because simply the whole Bible is my favorite verse. The whole Bible is a one verse. All the Bible is one verse. Have you ever heard of Mary Apparation? No. Why sometimes like to force their belief on us? Who like to force their belief on us? Why people, why Christians in Gaza don't talk about Hamas? If you go and live in Gaza, do you think you dare to open your mouth? Muslims don't dare to open their mouth. So you want the Christians who they are a little tiny minority to open their mouth? They will be dead. I mean, how smart you are. Who dare? Who dare to open his mouth? Romania have 100 something plus civilian with double citizenship from Gaza. Good for them. Romania is getting better, obviously, now. Do you realize how funny you are? Oh, you should not see me in the mirror. I look even funnier. Are we back? There is something wrong today with the internet. Even though in my side it says it, the speed is good, but I know. Why do Catholic variant Mary and other saint is it wrong? Venrat Venrat. Uh, let me use a translator to translate the Venrat. What Venrat mean? I'm trying to understand what the word mean. Worship. No, this is false. The Catholic, I'm not a Catholic, but don't go by lies people they say about the Catholic. Catholic don't worship Mary and nobody of the Catholic worship anyone beside God. That is a big lie. And if they say to you they pray to Mary, no, they are asking Mary to pray for them. They are not praying for Mary. They say, you know, pray for us, Mary. We are the sinners. So don't be dummy and, you know, take what people are saying. Go and investigate. Those who take, you know, things blindly without investigation, they are stupid. So don't be one of them.
Uh, will you ever debate again Sheikh Ruhi? I don't know. I don't know how to find him. I don't know. Bring him. I don't know. Somebody even told me he become a Christian. I have no idea. Do you watch the Chosen series? I never heard of it. Don't ask me about actors. Don't ask me about TV. Don't ask me about movies. I don't know, really. Even movies I saw, I don't really care for their names. Um, CP will never agree with anyone he will always have something to say well I'm not here to agree with you I'm here because I have something to say so obviously you get it wrong about the reason for me to be here because I agree with you or not is not why you are here you are here because I have something to say and obviously it's something interesting to the point you're still here right I am a Catholic now I'm a Christian okay let me warn you here in this in my page I don't care if you are Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox I consider people who say those things are a bunch of idiots I am I am a Catholic I'm a Christian now so what does that mean so just to warn you, if you are a person here, and are you from the KKK? So are you like now better? You are a Christian, not Catholic now? What does that mean? I thought the Catholic are a Christian too. Did they have different God? So people, they say stupid things. And, you know, yeah. here we go. He's, he's a special. He's a Christian now. He's not, you know, he's Catholic. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Weird though. Obviously, you are no Christian, no Catholic. You have no idea what Christianity is about. Christian is someone who believe in Jesus from his heart, and when he die, he will live with Jesus. Is not a Catholic. Is not a Protestant. Is not an Orthodox. It's someone who follow Jesus. So the stupid you, if you became a stalker for a name. You belong to that name, not to the person you follow, which is the Messiah. So a true believer is a person who don't care about those names, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. The second you care too much for those names, you don't care for Jesus. Because those, the titles are made by priests. And I know you can tell me I can find this word here in the Bible and that word there. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about that when you follow a school of a priest, you are following a priest. When you follow Jesus, you belong to Jesus. So a true Christian, he don't divide the Christians. A true Christian, he believe in one universal church, the Church of Christ. And there's no other church which mean all Christians who believe in Jesus that he died on the cross he's coming back by the Father the Son the Holy Spirit those who believe that the only salvation is by the Messiah those are my family the Christians not the Catholic not the Protestant not the Orthodox anyone so don't fool yourself with names and words. The wise man is the one who follow the Lord. He said, I know my sheep and my sheep they knew me. Is that God an angry God? Well, if I am God, I will be so angry to see how many stupid people in the world. Is that wrong to be angry? You see, anger sometimes 
if it's justified, uh, that means there is intelligence. As an example, if you are married and your wife, she is a cheating, should you be angry? Or should be happy? If you have a son and he is doing drugs, should you be angry or happy? So what's wrong with God is an angry God? The father, he will be angry to see his child lost because he love him. So the anger, not because he is bad, the anger because he is good. Who wrote the Bible? The pen these days, the printer. Here we go, another smart person. Who is the most knowledgeable Muslim you have ever debated? I never met a knowledgeable Muslim. All of them they are donkeys. That would be weird to find. In a, you know, because even Muhammad himself is not knowledgeable. So how you can find an, you know, uh, knowledgeable Muslim that is weird to find I mean <clears throat> the gospel of Judah hmm. You know, for us, anything is not in part of our gospel is not a gospel. Um, so, you know, there is many, let us say, there's many books they can be considered as to study as a point of history. Or if you are a person doing some academic uh, research, uh, uh, you know, trying to, you know, to, to go back on time. But for me, I believe that what we have is what is our gospel. Anything else is not. <coughs> What is the best way for average Christian to evangelize to a Muslim? You know, Muslim is just a word. Muslims are not the same. So when you speak to a person, let us let us make it as you are you are going trying to convince somebody, not necessarily a Muslim, about something. Let us say you are talking to your wife, or your son, or your dad, or your mom, or. So what is the what is the first step to convince somebody with something? Anybody can tell me? Not necessarily with Muslim. What is the first step in order to be able to convince somebody? In your idea. Anyone knows? Treat him good. Evidence. Honesty. Gain their trust. Humble. Find common ground. Strong point and facts. Uh, actually, none of those. None of these. You see, the first thing you do is to listen to the person and understand his logic. 
what the Christian they do when they debate Muslims, they bring their logic to the table. So right away they start saying to them, Jesus loves you, Jesus died in the cross for you, Jesus, he did this, you know, this is uh, your logic. So you are convinced with your logic, and now you are trying to use your logic to convince someone his logic is totally different. Don't do that. If you want to convince somebody with something, try to understand his logic. And then after you listen to him and understand his logic, try to use his logic, because that's what will work, not your logic. So you listen to his logic, you understand his logic, and now depend in your intelligence and your ability of using that logic to convince him. You mentioned the truth. Well, you should be truthful anyway. You mentioned to be honest. Well, you have, should be honest anyway. But what the point, if you are speaking gibberish and he is speaking Chinese, I mean, you have two languages. So don't use your logic, use his logic. I will give you an example. You remember I told you a story about a Muslim. He said to me, if Jesus is the son of his father, shouldn't his father, I mean God supposedly, Shouldn't his father, God the Father, save him? I said, okay, sound good. I agree with you. This is very good. But based on this, Jesus must be God in Islam. Because his father in Islam saved him. Are you with me? So, I did not use my logic to destroy his logic. I used his logic to destroy his logic. Can he escape what he just said? No. So always you have to learn how to listen to the person you are trying to discuss with him, not necessarily about religion, anything. Your wife, your husband, your anything. Try to listen carefully and use his logic, not yours. You know, in order to clean dirt involve oil, what we use? You have to use oil. You see, detergent, they have inside the detergent something have to do with oil. Oil, oil, like oil versus oil. If you use water only, you cannot clean oil by water. Because they have two different nature. They don't mix. So you are not really able to clean it. So you touch, you know, some grease and etc. And, and then you put it under the faucet with the water. Oh, nothing changed. I mean, you are just making your hand more dirty. But water can clean a lot of stuff. But not that. So in order to clean that thing, you have to use a material from the same kind. Otherwise, you cannot do it.
you should create your own discord channel so everyone can talk there well i tried this discord i found it the same as a bathroom you don't even know who's talking once i joined this discord they asked me to go and i open one and then i didn't know voices coming from everywhere under the table top of the table i have no idea how it works This tactic will work only with not voice Muslim. No, my friend, this tactic will work uh, 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 with everybody. It doesn't matter if you agree that you you won the argument or not. Do you think a fool he will say you won the argument? No, but still you won the argument. So it's not about he is a stubborn or not. Who care? It's about doing the right argument. So the one who is smart and he's listening, he knew that you won the argument and he is a fool. But don't expect the fool to admit that he's a fool. That would be foolish of you. If you think a fool, he will say he's a fool. Have you ever heard of a fool saying he is a fool? Never. Because if you say that, that means it's smart. Okay. <clears throat> All right, look like we are out of things. Uh. <clears throat> Majnoon, five hours now? Why, Anne, you are calling me crazy? Five hours? Me, myself, I'm enjoying my time, you know. Uh, and obviously people are enjoying being here too. So which one is better? Five hours in your life using your brain, which for me is the best joy, you know. Imagine your brain is not working. You are not alive. So if I am now here for five hours answering people, And in order to answer people, you have to use your brain. For me, that is a joy. So which one is better? To go and watch TV, let us say, and you are watching people using their brain, but they give you no benefit of anything. It's just entertainment. Me, myself, I don't mind to listen to somebody. He can teach me something. That would be my pleasure. So it's not about five hours or five minutes. It's about, did we spend the five hours for something good or it was a waste of time? The Chosen series is a great Christian show. All right. But you have to be careful because sometimes, you know, I mean, anything have to do with acting and movies, I don't trust. Uh, production, because you never know who's behind the program. They can, might put there something not right and you don't notice it. Do you still miss your home country? America is my home country. I have no other country. Someone can teach you? Why not? I can type right now. Here we go. Did you guys ask you what that word mean? And you told me mean like to worship? Huh? You just taught me something. Who said that you cannot teach me? You are mistaken. 
always there is someone can teach you. But depend in what, you know. Always we have ignorance. It can be about language, it can be about history, it can be about physics, you know, I mean, we, we don't know everything. We have, What we know is very limited. So yes, always there is somebody can teach you. My son work in Kuwait, is it safe there? Well, it's fine, but I hope he is educated and they will not mislead him and try to convert him to Islam because this is what they try to do. There's a lot of Muslim Brotherhood there. Uh, don't ask me about names. Sorry, I don't know everybody. I mean... Yeah, you know, usually I don't really watch movies, even Christian ones. Uh, I don't like to see a movie made about Jesus. I don't like to see anyone uh, acting as Jesus. I think, I believe, me, myself, I believe this is wrong. However, uh, if it helps people to understand the Bible, well, okay. But for me, I don't, I don't feel good about it. Uh, usually if I turn my TV on, I put YouTube in uh, like Ocean or how to do things, let us say uh, how to fix something, learn something new, you know, something uh, uh, useful. But mostly I like, uh, you know, I like I work right in my book. I put YouTube in an ocean life video or an ocean sound or rain, you know. I don't really watch too much movies. The only good thing about Gulf uh, countries, you don't pay any tax. You pay a high tax there. You live with idiots. Every day you live there is not a day in your life. I mean, I don't know, uh, I, I, maybe Emirat is different a little bit, there is more freedom, but the rest of the Gulf countries, you are paying a very high tax from your life, because living there is the biggest loser decision you do. Because all what you do there is just making money, you are not living, you know. Me, myself, I would prefer to, to live anywhere, but not to live in any Islamic country. Because this is not a life. Any place in the world, your freedom of speech and belief is not granted. That means you are living as an animal. For always, this is what the animals are about, you know. You tell them, go, get in, chicken, hey, get in, get out, pop, 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 pop. Well, give them seed. So, when you live in the Gulf, you are like a chicken seeking the seed. They feed you. And when the food is over, they put you in the room again. So you spend your life, year after year, going from the room to the seed, from the seed to the room, from the room to the seed, from the room to the yard. Then after living there, for like 10 years, 20 years, you come back with some trash of money and you find that you lost, you lost your, you know, your young uh, life with those idiots. What the money would do to you? If you ask me, if I'm a Filipino, I prefer to live in the Philippines poor and die in the Philippines and will never work in the Gulf. And if I do, maybe to work for a year maximum, you will find those poor Filipinos, they go there. They work for a year. They want to go home. 
He start buying gifts, a phone to his nephew, a phone for his cousin, a camera to his sister, uh, you know, a cook to his mother. So the whole money he saved for the whole year is gone. So he go vacation, he go back bankrupt. Now he is desperate to go back to the Gulf. He stay another year. Next year he wanna go vacation, two years after. Two years, every two years you see your family. The same garbage happen again. So he stay poor, he spend his life there, he never save a penny. So what you did? Nothing, you've been stupid. You've been literally stupid. You did not, like, if you work there for two years and come back to open a store, buy a land, I mean, just to have some capital to start a little business, buy those, you know, like little tuck talk, you know, something to make living. No, we spend our life living there like, working like donkeys, being slaves for those Muslims, just to buy a gift to mommy and daddy and sister and nephew, and then... And then you grow old in age, and then you come back to Philippines bankrupt. So living in those countries is a waste of time. And your money is not good. Because you cannot get that time you spend there back. <laughs> yeah, my translation is coming, but it's, it's slow. And not only that, I mean, when you live in those countries, anyone can accuse you of anything. And always they will side with the local. Not only just in Muslim countries, you know, I mean, that can happen anywhere. Like, you know, there's many people, they go, uh, they want to uh, live in Thailand. You want to live in the Philippines. They go and, you know, see an old guy, you know, he want to date and girl, she is 12, 20 years old or 19 years old. You want to be a teenager again. If one, if one person accuse you of something, you are in big trouble. They can blackmail you, they can falsely accuse you, and then you will see how stupid you are. So always when you live in country is not yours. And if the country is not a good equality, where the government is corrupt, police is corrupt, judges are corrupt, and make it worse if religion is involved and you are not from the same religion. So what will happen to you? Any person can accuse you of anything. You can't even leave the country and you might stay in jail for many years. This was in the mall of Emirat. Here we go. This is Emirat. The guy, he took his camera. But you see, he will not dare to do that to someone who is an Arab. Obviously, he noticed. Are you an Asian person? Are you like an Asian Filipino? Cargo crew? He will not dare to do that to someone who is an American. If they notice that you are a person coming from a you know country, they don't respect. They will do that to you. But if I was an Emirat, do the shake there to grab my camera. <laughs> Yeah, if you are an Asian, if you are a Filipino, if you are Indonesian, they will treat you like a slave. I don't want to use bad language, but you know what I'm talking about.
do dogs in Singapore and you know where what you are an Indian yeah because he, they knew that you are a poor person you know okay Indian so but if you are an American he will not dare to touch your camera Very, very trashy society. I will never live in those countries. In those countries, the Arab, they are the superior, and the rest are their slaves. Did you see the video of, of uh, the family, the royal family, they call themselves royal, of Imarat, the brother of the, uh, the prince? He was put in salt in the anus of the Pakistani guy. Did you see it? And then he drove, he put him in the top of a piece of wood, have nails, and then he dropped his jeep over him. Did you see it? This is an Emirat. You are a dog for them. because he's a Pakistani. You can search for it. I forgot the name, but you can say, you can search for United Arab Emirate Royal torturing something. Just search for it, you can find it. I'm, I'm sure you can find it. He put salt in his anus. He beat him. And not only that, he asked uh, a businessman who is Syrian to record him. He enjoyed it. You know, he want to record him, this, the, the brother of the, royal, the, 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 the ruler of Dubai. He asked the businessman to record him doing that. And the policeman is next to them, because, but the policeman is their dog too. They are the they are the rulers of the of the country. <laughs> yeah, this is what you are, you know, this is what you are signing for when you go there. This is what you sign for. Um let me see what was the name. I'm trying to find it. Here we go. And he is cleared of torture. <laughs> he is putting salt in the anus of the guy live on camera. Uh, this guy from Afghanistan, sorry, not from... Uh, Here we go. The video is there. <laughs> he drove over him. And you can imagine how many stories like this happen every day. But this one, because this businessman, he, uh, you know, he have a problem with those people, you know, so he, when he went to the state, he exposed them. All right. <clears throat> All right, we have enough for today. But you know, I don't find that the fault of those people, I find it the fault of the government of those countries. So if you are an Indian, in order to be respected, you have to teach your, you know, government to fight for you. If your government don't care for you, why they will care for you?
same as in Indonesia. You know, there's Indonesian girls, they come to work in, in the Gulf. They rape them. Many, they get killed. They never return. Indonesian government is very weak. And they look down at Indonesian people. It's a, it's a, it's a reality. You know, for them, Indonesian is a maid. Maid, you know, maid, you know, they don't respect maid. What, what do you expect them? So, hundreds of Indonesian women went missing in Saudi Arabia. Nobody knows where they are. Obviously, they get killed. They rape them and they throw them in the desert. They rape the maid. And usually, when the maid, she is going to have a baby, in order to avoid the what happened, because that will cause a big problem, they kill the maid, they, they throw her in the desert. You know, Saudi Arabia is massive. I mean, good luck if somebody can find your body after a, a hundred years. And they report that the maid, she took the money from the drawer and she ran away. We do not know where she is. That's it. The police will make a report and never been found again. Very simple. Who's going to believe? Even if the maid, let us say, she been found. Oh. Well, okay, I don't know. We, she ran away from our house. Since then, we did not see her. Right? Very simple. This is the land of slavery. And a human being life means nothing. And the second they have a woman in their house as a maid, sex is involved. The second the woman she agreed to work as a maid, her job is to take off her clothing. And not only one person will sleep with her, the whole family will sleep with her. I know a story actually about a woman she married. She did not, she's not a maid. The guy he went, I think she was a Syrian girl. The Saudi guy, he married the Syrian girl. She was 16, 17, something like that. He married her. Okay, no problem. She came back with him to Saudi Arabia. When she arrived, she found out that the whole family she should sleep with. They share women. So his brothers, she should allow them to sleep with her. Even his father, an old man. She spent a bunch of four or five years, as I heard in the story, until she was able, like, they don't even let her go out. They don't, she have a guardian with her. Somebody from the family have to take them, walk with them, next to them. They can't speak to anybody. And then she found somebody in the market, in the mall where she buy clothing. He is from her country. So she wrote a little paper begging him to call the embassy and to tell him, what it says here in the paper and then they were able to smuggle her out of the country the whole family is raping this woman young girl no phone she cannot go out she meet no people she is literally a slave Now, I'm not saying all of them, they will do that. There's people who they are, they have dignity. They don't do that stuff. But there is a lot of trash. There is people, they have, they are good family. They are, even they are Muslim, so what? Not every Muslim is a piece of shit. There is people, they have, you know, quality. But how lucky you are. I mean, that you have to be lucky. And the police is against you. All what they need to do, they can call the police. They say she did this. She did beat our son. They can accuse you of anything. And right away ask yourself, they will take the side of who? And by the way, the same thing can happen in different countries too, not only in Muslim countries. Like I know a guy, he was in the Philippines. Uh, he went to, you know, those uh, rest, resto bar or something. So anyway, 
a woman, obviously, she is a whore. She accused him that he touched her ass. He said, I did not. She said, you know, you did. He said, I did not. No, you did. She said, listen, if you do give me like etc. money, 5,000, I don't know how much, I will call the police. He said, oh, but I did not touch you. And because he did not touch her, the guy is sure that she cannot do anything. So now she called the police. The police make a report. They told him you cannot leave the country. I said, what, what are you talking about? You know, I have a business. I have, you cannot leave the country. That's it. You have a case. She had to drop her case first. So the 5,000 became 250. The 250 became 500. The 500 they became 1 billion pesos. All of this because this is stupid guy decided to go to a place where there's hookers. You associate yourself with the with the low class, you end with the low class. And the police will get their shares and you know. So in the beginning he refused to pay five thousand. He ended with million pesos. I don't know how much at the end he paid. And imagine your wife, she learned, she heard the news that somebody accused you. I mean, who's going to believe you now? There was a rumor or maybe your business or the company or your friends. They heard now that you've been arrested or they investigate you in the Philippines. You know, you destroy your reputation. But the Philippines is a very nice country. There's very good people there too. But if you go associate yourself with the trash, you will end with the trash. In the Middle East, the majority, they are living the life of trash. There is no ethic, slavery. Religion encourages slavery. So what do you expect? So you will be lucky if you meet the good equality there. That's why you have to be very careful. You associate yourself with whom, you go out with whom, you stay with whom, who is your friends. Otherwise, you are making a big mistake. Right? Stay away from trash. Otherwise, don't complain later about getting dirty. If you go to any country, try to find quality people. Not a druggy, drunken, hookers. And then don't expect from someone working as a pimp or a hooker or someone sleep around. Don't expect quality. Don't. If you go to the bar and those hookers and those, are you are you really expecting something good? What exactly you are looking for? What what do you what what you expecting? Many people, by the way, they think that like countries like Thailand are just heaven. In Thailand, there's a lot of people; their life is destroyed. Because one problem, just one problem, you can stay in jail for many years. And nobody care for you, not even your embassy, they can do nothing for you. And you know, there's some people they go to those countries like Thailand to see in beautiful beaches, nature. Okay, usually if you do that, you will be safe. If you start associating yourself with those nightclubs and bars and hookers, not only you might get a disease mostly, nasty disease, mostly you will end in a very horrible way.
you learned your lesson in the hard way. Okay, uh, maybe you can leave your comment later and tell, it, uh, tell if you like to share your lesson so people they can you know learn from you. But uh, when you go as a foreigner for a different country, always you are second person, not first class. Remember that you are not local. It doesn't matter how good people around you are. You are not local. You will lose all your privilege as a citizen. You will not be treated equally. And if something wrong happened, especially in countries where people think that you are rich and they are poor, everybody will try to take advantage of you. You have a car accident, they will take advantage of you. You have a fight, they will take advantage of you. Somebody accuse you, you are in deep trouble. But people will not. How many get, people get trapped and extorted for money in Turkey? It happened. Turkey is a very messed up country. In, in Turkey, you, you know, you might lose your kidney, you know. <laughs> they send, you know, there's many stupid, naive ones. Like, uh, you know, they, they, those mafia, they send like beautiful girls, you know. So you are like walking in the street and then a girl, she come to you and she is so beautiful. And maybe you are like not attractive so much. I mean, oh, this is a girl, a girl she like to talk. Do you like to have uh, some tea together? Uh, they put something for you in the tea and then you find yourself two days after in the street and your kidney is gone. Welcome to Turkey. Yeah, Turkey and Iran, they are very well known of Turkey, of, of kidney theft. Very serious crime. You might even, you know, you might die. I mean, you are lucky if you, if you live. Yeah, and the scam of uh, like uh, let us drink tea somewhere. I know a place where tea is very nice, very special tea. You go with the girl, and then I saw many videos on YouTube. Uh, and then they said to you that this tea uh, cost you four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. You say like what? It's a tea. They said to you, we told you it's a special. What's wrong with you? You pay or what? Big scam. Turkey is the last place to go to. Very, very bad. Well, I've been in China, but I, I did not see anything really. I think in China, at least, people, they fear the police, you know, they fear the government. The government there is very aggressive. But in Turkey, the country is messed up. <laughs> All right. I think we have enough for today. I don't think I'm going to keep this video. I mean, we spoke about uh, many tons of things. So let us say this video today was not a success to keep it a focus in one topic. And uh, that will make us not to keep it. But I will, I might keep it for a little bit so you guys can watch. But I don't think it's going to be enough for you. I mean, the video already is like five hours. And I don't know what's wrong with YouTube. Keep saying to me that my connection is not, is a slow. But from my side, it says very good. I mean, I know. Yeah, actually, I'm, st I'm I'm hiding my yawning. I'm yawning now. Allah, Allah, he, he hates those who do yawning. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we will see if I will keep it or not. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope 
today we have you know we did learn something good and we enjoy our time and I hope I wasn't uh, rude to some of you or most of you and if I was take it easy take your socks and sleep tomorrow you will forget about it all right because tomorrow is a new day and more dishes to wash thank you God bless you and I hope to see you soon again. God is good. So is Jesus. I mean.